Yo. We're back with another episode of Feel Free. Uh, I'll be your host, John Cerrone. We're going to be talking about a bunch of shit that you might not care about, but if you do, obviously you're you're more than welcome to keep listening. This is the number one most awful podcast um, that is streaming right now, so if you're all about that, then keep on listening. I got a guest today. We call him Jimmy. His name is Chris, uh, businessman extraordinaire. Um, you want to introduce yourself? Um, yeah. So... My name is Chris Meganbeer. Have a degree in nutrition. Really into you know health, nutrition, um, anything related to lifestyle. And uh, I own a couple different businesses. I have a beverage company. Um, we do mostly private label stuff. And I also work with you at your the mom's, bookkeeping. Yeah, doing keeping those books. Accounting without a CPA. <laughs> exactly. That's what we call it. And uh, besides doing bookkeeping, I'll do, uh, you know, other small business consulting, helping set up offices or helping get people in order. Like IT them. stuff. Yeah. Maybe some like graphic minor design. Minor IT stuff, some graphic design, and, like, also, you know, like, getting people corporate filed. Like, I know that you're trying to start an LLC. So I like am, we're yeah. We're going to have to sit down and do that as well. Yeah, it's going to be a pain. So, yeah, I mean, it's really not that hard. Yeah, I mean, well, I think everything outside of just working a normal job is always a pain, though. Yeah. Like, anytime you're, like, stepping out of your comfort zone to do anything, like, I mean, obviously, like, I'm going to be using this platform to, like, push the book that I'm trying to publish. Of course. Which is a pain in the ass, because now I have to hire people to, like, help with the book. You don't just, like, write a book and publish it. No, I know. There's so many other steps. There's so many steps. And, like, I've been reading reading up on it, and I'm just like, God, this fucking sucks. But, you know, I'll get around to it. Um I mean, mostly what we'll be talking about today, definitely, I know, like, the name of the podcast is Feel Free. It's more like, feel free to talk about, like, your hobbies, what's going through your mind, maybe current events, or just, like, maybe the dream you're chasing. I know, like, if I have Joe on here, he's going to talk about running. Of course. You know, chasing his dream and all that (laughs) shit, obviously, which it's a good story. It's an uplifting story. You know, I know you and uh, Jackie had finished your degree in nutrition, and biomedical science um so you guys are really into the whole holistic lifestyle and all your views on mental physical well-being and that's also going to be a huge part of the podcast too because it's all about like you know me overcoming addiction that's a huge thing three years sober um and how that changes your perspective really how like western countries specifically the united states how it views health as a whole and how we disagree with that completely yeah. you know um they try and push an agenda like oh live however you want because in 50 60 years the medical industry will just save you yeah you know that that's bullshit obviously so everything's so fragmented you know what i mean it's like everybody yeah. looks at each individual piece as like its own separate functioning You know, it's like if there's something wrong with your liver, it's just because there's something wrong with your liver. It has nothing to do with any other organs or anything else in your body. It's just like. But isn't isn't that wrong? It is wrong. Yeah, because yes, yes, obviously. Yeah, because there's so much more. There's so much more to it than that. It's like whatever you are genetically predisposed to. To exhibiting. okay, like some people. Might be genetically predisposed to cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. Some people might be genetically predisposed to diabetes. Yeah, of course. You're going to get there the same way. Yeah. It's just a matter of, like, what your genes uh, allow you to experience, if that makes sense. Yeah, but there's also a lot of preventative, uh, like, things you can do to keep yourself from falling into that trap. Absolutely. Obviously, like... Cardiovascular disease runs on both sides of my family. Same with diabetes. Me too. You know, obviously, yeah. but that's just America. Yeah. In, in a nutshell. Yeah. I mean, look at like the top causes of death. I would tell you that probably almost every one of them is related in some way to, uh, to, you know, nutrition and lifestyle. I mean, even going as far as to suggest that something like suicide, which I know is a leading cause of death, and you know, as 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 painful as it is, like there is underlying inflammatory causes that will also lead to things like anxiety and depression yeah of course that are all related to diet and lifestyle it's it's what you're putting in your body but it's also like it's also your mental health at that point because you can have someone who's like in the best shape of their life and who eats fantastically but they're just 
dealing with reality in a crippling way. Oh, yeah. Like, just, I, you already know my opinion on social media or just the connections we have between humans right now in the 21st century, and I just don't think we're going in the right direction. Totally agree with that. So, you know, people, like, although we have the world at our fingertips, like, we feel very disconnected right now. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Granted, like, you can join some groups on Facebook and you can talk to like-minded people, but you're doing that from your couch or your it, you're, bed. You're creating a persona. It's not actually. That's not you. It's not you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just who you want people to think you are. But that's that's destructive, though. Yeah, because of Because then you have to go and live a different person, like, out, outside. Outside, yeah. you yeah. know? And, like, I think. Then you come home and, like, you feel terrible about yourself. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. It's, it's fucked. Yeah. But that's, like, why, you know, that's why we slip into the, these bad habits. That's why, like, I drink, you know, smoke weed, you know, anything to, like, numb ourselves from our own like conscious yeah. you know or just a quick fix of you know quick f- little whatever fun pleasure like yeah but it's not to say like that stuff's bad it's just it's addictive yeah it's like man we work these jobs we work ourselves ragged and then instead of like fulfilling ourselves with like health or like eating right we eat shitty food. We scroll good, our good phones. relationships. Good I mean, relationships. Like, there's so many yeah. like there's so many positive it, outside of just you know diet. Yeah, like lifestyle encompasses like so many different things. But we're just exhausted. Yeah, we're just tired. Exactly. You know, every everybody's staying up too late, playing video games or watching TV. Too many screens, myself man. Included. Yeah. Oh yeah. Honestly, like I the amount of times I probably write the word screens in all of my writing like the book that i'm trying to publish like i write screens all the time like i just think what was that book fahrenheit 451 yeah you remember that book i yeah where they yeah they at the they, end they they burn the books and they burn stuff, the books and the firefighters or but whatever. like in in the book um the main character his wife like he comes into his house it's basically like isn't a, that where they have the tvs on the walls yeah they're called that, yeah. parlors yes, dude I know but exactly they're just like talking screens about but the thing is they're interactive with the person yeah. sitting there and this guy came up with this book like way before this, this is, shit yeah, came it was, in. what like the the 30s or the 40s or i think it might have been 50s but yeah. still to like even come up with this before like like he saw a tv and he goes i know exactly where this but, is yeah. going and it's fucked because, like, his wife had, like, committed suicide multiple times, and they just, like, throw the medics in there to resuscitate people, yeah. and she just goes right back to, like— Just numbing herself. Exactly. Yep. Like, I think that's fucking crazy. It is. I think that's where we're but heading. But, dude, like, that's, like, yeah, I mean, like— It's yeah, whack, though. It's it, very symbolic, obviously, but, like, I mean, it's almost—parts of it can definitely be taken literally. I mean, like— I know that's what I'm scared yeah, of though. Yeah. Like he, here's the thing, like I we we do bookkeeping, right? So normally I'm staring at a screen, I'm crunching numbers all day. Cooking books. Cooking books, cooking the books, the quickest books in the Midwest actually. That's what I always say. <laughs> 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 Fast as fuck. Um and then I'm scrolling my phone during the workday, obviously, or if I'm talking to clients or I'm picking music and then I come home, if I'm not like meal prepping or working out, like maybe I'm writing on my computer. Or, you know, like watching TV or playing a video game. It's like so many screens. It's like, are my eyes? Everything. Be- it's so many. It's yeah. it's ridiculous. Dude, even, even getting into my car. There's a like, screen. There's a screen there's right a screen there. There's right a screen right there. It's got my backup camera. It's got all my radio stuff on there. I just you know feel what I mean? bad like, for the kids that grow up with it oh, now. Oh, man. Because. Where the iPad is the babysitter. Like. I th- it's fucked, man. Like, terrible, I mean, I, I mean oh. I've seen kids that like. like tiny little kids that can use phones better than some adults like oh for sure yeah. like my dad can't use a fucking phone to yeah. save his goddamn exactly. life you know? exactly which is ridiculous because he's had it for a decade yeah. now <sighs> sorry i had to take a sip of my mud water sponsor me <laughs> <laughs> shameless plug please yeah we'll give you like five cents to say our product on yeah, your podcast every time you say mud water it's five cents mud water mud water drink it <laughs> <laughs> drink the fuck out of it I, I wrote a list of like topics down that I like want to cover. Let's do it. In well, no, this not even in this podcast. Oh, just but, in like general. just in general, yeah, yeah. yeah. So obviously, like the point of the podcast is to be entertaining, but also informative and funny too, right? No bullshit, which could mean anything, obviously. But we're gonna tackle things like we're basically gonna have the same conversations that we always have. I assume exactly. Yeah, <laughs> of course. That that's the whole point. Which I think we have good conversations. Of course. You know, obviously, the conversations 
kind of started when, like, we were partying a lot late nights. Yeah, even before that, I would say high school. Yeah, high we school too. Some of these conversations. But like, yeah, but we like really came into like intelligent conversations, like obviously in college. Yeah. But like between the ages of nineteen and yeah. twenty-one, we finally like got our footing. Like when we really. Like, yeah. critical thinking, yeah, like, yeah. using premises, like, logical discussions while on a bunch of drugs. Yes. You know? Of course. I mean. Which, like, gave a new perspective on things, opened your mind and stuff. And now that we're, like, predominantly sober, for the most part, it's, like, the the conversations are even more informative, mm -hmm. you know? They're more logical. Um, but that's, like, the whole point of the podcast is to get this out there so people can listen to these things. The same conversations that we have in the living room about things that we think should be talked about, people need to hear this shit, you know? Right there with you, dude. Because 10 agree. years ago, people were calling us crazy, and now some of this shit is, like, literally spinning You're around right the toilet. in your face. It's in your face. We're cir I'm not going to say we're circling the toilet because I'm not that pessimistic, but I am that pessimistic. <laughs> I'm pretty nihilistic. A little bit. You know, I, I got Johnny Nihilism over here. Um but I, the podcast is going to evolve. I'm going to bring in different people. We're going to talk about different things, like your perspective on health, like nutrition and stuff, Joe's perspective on chasing your dream and also running and health. And then there's, like, there's politics, diet, exercise. I want to talk a lot about hobbies because that's another thing that I talk about in my book and how we, we give up on our hobbies as we get older. Um, and there's three reasons why we do that. Number one, um, we say we don't have time for them, right? That's the main thing. We're working, and then we come home to do adult things, and we slowly but surely lose joy in our hobbies, like when we spin poi, right? Or when yep. we glove or do lights or shit like that. You know, we just lose time. Secondly, as we get older, we get more self-conscious. We're like, oh, I don't want people seeing me do that. Like, I'm an adult now. Like, I got to be an adult. That's fucking bullshit, all right? Number three... We stop doing things because sometimes we think, oh, that's not going to make me money, you know, because we're constantly thinking about money. Yeah, I mean, and the time that it takes for you to make money is then offset by, you know, pleasure, everything else that's going on. In or your a hobby. Life. Yeah, and exactly. you got to try and squeeze in something that, yeah, you're going to enjoy it, but are you going to get paid? That's what I'm saying, that? you know, <clears throat> but I think we forget that those hobbies give us a reason to wake up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more than just work. It's more than just the money. You know, it's about the relationships we have. It's about our hobbies that we do. You know, like Lisa paints a lot. She hasn't painted in a while, but she was actually a really good painter. I've That's seen some. Cool. Yeah, I've seen some of her shit, you know. Um, but yeah, the hobbies is another part of the book that I wanted to talk about. Um, obviously, there's like religion, politics, industry in general. Um, All things that I'm willing to talk about. Exactly. Pollution, too. Um, that's a big topic right now, as has always been. Pollution? Yeah, it's just fucked. And, you know, I'm not like... Dude, I think I heard a statistic. It's like the average person eats the um, the same amount of plastic that you would see in a credit card, like, every week or something every now. Every week? Yeah. I'm That's gonna gross. Have to, I'm gonna have you got to hold I'm gonna on, I'm going to have man. to find that I was going to say, you got to fact check yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Let me look that up. It was something that I heard in passing. That's ridiculous. There's no way. Yeah. Let me check that out, but... I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. That's outlandish. If you were going to say, like, every year, I'm like, all right, I can see that, you know? Because they did that study where there's um, yeah, plastic. Yeah, average person, according to the Jerusalem Post, the average person swallows a credit card's worth of plastic every week. New <laughs> Australian study. Small particles make their way into food, beverages, and even the air we breathe. So, but here's the thing. Plastic is a problem because it doesn't break down in nature, right? I mean. Does our body break down most of it, though? So. Is the question. So, it's, I would say. Not really. Not enough. I mean, like, I'm sure that there's some of it that gets detoxed, but I know that, like, just like, you know, other environmental pollutants, that, like, some of it gets stored. A lot of it impacts things like hormones. Like, you know, like, everybody always talks about BPA, like, or at least that was, like, the really big one was BPA. I mean, it still is a pretty big and one. That's in the water bottles, right? So they, they removed it from water bottles, and but it's still actually found in high amounts in uh, receipt paper. 
Okay. And so when you touch receipt paper and like it actually does kind of get absorbed into your skin, especially really? like if your hands are wet and That's you're touching fucked. receipt paper. Yeah. What? So people who sit there and so like, yeah, the people who are behind the, the registers all day that are printing receipts and touching them and handing you your receipts are, you know, not only are they getting a dose of estrogen, but so are you. And so that like BPA is a it's an estrogen mimicking compound. And so it was banned in plastic, but the problem is, is that there are so many other compounds that are just like it out there. Yeah, of course. And society in general is just is already way too estrogen dominant. It's why you see, you know, the man like with men, it's the man boobs and the big stomachs and like the lower, the big lower waists. And then in women, you know, it's like painful periods and things like. You know PCOS, which is also related to poor diet, but there's just like some like painful, you know, painful periods and uh, uh, endometriosis is another one. Like there's there, like so many different effects that it has well, on having, human beings. Yeah, well, having too much of anything, like if you want to just say there's too much testosterone, then people are probably just getting really angry all the yeah. time you know or going bald or know. going bald yeah. yeah which is yeah it's it's primal you yeah. know um <laughs> yeah i mean obviously too much of anything is bad i mean like there's a lot of estrogen in soy i know that yeah. right phytoestrogens yeah. yep yeah That's i don't really one. i can't not put soy sauce on my my See, the sushi, problem is, is that most of the soy that we're getting isn't coming from the soy sauce that you're putting on your sushi like if that was the only soy you were getting who cares the yeah soy, yeah soy that we're getting is like it, it's in pretty much everything well, that like you filler, could think right? of. Well, it's, it's just a cheap it's, filler. It's the oil that's used as it, it's it's an industrial cooking oil. So like okay. so, soybean oil, along with some of these other like really high omega six oils, like uh, you know canola oil and peanut oil and stuff like that. They're yeah. used in cooking. It should not be. Of course. But, yeah, soybean oil is probably the biggest way that we get. Uh, soy into our diets and it's not even at that point it's not even the estrogen that's really the problem it's more so uh the linoleic acid which is the uh omega-6 fatty acid that's attached your that's in soybean oil yeah yeah big uh big leader in cardiovascular disease diabetes the betus the betus the diabetes the itis my mom fixed her diabetes her type 2 nice you know yeah I mean, yeah, it's reversible. It People is reversible. I, I she mean, wasn't I, born with it. Yeah, you know, she just loved soda. Yeah, I mean, and so the problem with the problem with it is, is like, in terms of like type two diabetes, not type one diabetes. In terms of type two diabetes, the problem is, is if, picture like your metabolism is like a muscle, right? And like you're constantly, you know, you have your carb muscle where you burn. The, there's the carbohydrate pathway where like mm-hmm. everything that you're eating that's carb related is going down the carb pathway and then yeah. you have your fat metabolism pathway okay the carb you, the the breakdown of carbohydrates is always like preferred to the breakdown of fats by the cell it's glucose is much easier to break down oh yeah and by, so yeah, by far fat when you're eating a high carb meal and like there's you know there's a decent amount of fat in there as well like a mixed matri- macronutrient meal it's actually a chance that you're gonna like just store that fat for later mm-hmm. um and so Basically, what happens is, is with all of the extremely overprocessed foods that we have, that like are you know like even like fruit juices don't have that fiber that's preventing it from getting broken down as fast, or like if you're looking at wheat, you they're completely removing like multiple components of the wheat and then just leaving I think it's the germ, and you know that's what they use to make bread, but it's extremely high glycemic and then like that leads to these insane blood sugar spikes which then leads to insulin resistance which then yeah, which leads to disease yeah, and then so for like a type 2 diabetic going back to my original point when you get to the point where you are a type 2 diabetic because you have like destroyed like abused your metabolic machinery so hard it becomes a it, it's very easy it, it's it's hard to reverse it, but it's possible, and it's very easy to go back when yeah. you're not being smart. Like my dad, like so, I put my dad on a ketogenic diet, and for like a couple months, he actually was able to get off all of his medications. He doesn't take insulin, thankfully, but he was able to get off of like all of his blood sugar lowering drugs. And the second he stopped doing it, you know, his blood sugar went went right back to where yeah, it was. Of it's like, dude, you can't like just you know, and especially he, he's not exercising; he's just watching what he's eating, and he's not taking his medication. It's like. 
that's not a permanent fix. No, you, it's you, not. you have to you have to do more than just like watch what you're eating at that point. Like, of course. Well, I mean, that's kind of where what's holding my mom up too. She's got like a clogged artery right now. Yeah, like she had that problem like two or three months ago, where she kept having to go to like the hospital. And me and Joe have been giving her shit. It's like you have to start taking this seriously. Trust me, dude. I it's, know it's all fuck, about fucking, fucking cardiovascular disease. It's fucking bro. crazy, My mom's though. Had two heart attacks, and she's not even sixty. It's fucking I know, crazy. I know. And they just don't do anything. I know. These That's are conversations fucking... that I I've literally ha- been having the same conversation with my mother like since I was like ten years old. Dude. Like, here's the thing, I changed my life because I was tired of waking up hungover every day yeah right like at the height of my alcoholism or the height of my psychosis and addiction to stimulants it was like i just got so sick of myself that i had to make a change and you know if we break it down to like a year-long thing let's just say between the ages of like 19 to 26 that was like i was in the pits yeah okay so that's seven years can you imagine if i kept that going until i was 60 dude I, I <laughs> like I, I'm not like trying to compare like my mother's years or or your father's years of like eating poorly and making poor decisions for seven years, but it's like a, as you like start feeling this way, like your fifties pretty much you can't run anymore, right? Yeah, like you can't break a sweat. Yeah, you you can't like be a can't human. even walk up the fucking stairs without like running it's, out of breath. Exactly, dude. And, like I. I I have gained and lost hundreds of pounds. I know. You know what I mean? So like I've been on I've 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 been like in the best shape of my life and then on the other side I've been fat and lazy and it's like I don't even like right now because you know like I'm still dealing with all the post covid shit like after lockdown like it went it all just went downhill for me. Yeah, and but it's so, it's all routine at that point. But it's like know? but it's like I know how bad I feel at 29 when I eat like shit. I, that, especially after like years of it and like what, when it's like, it's fine, you know, when, when it catches, bad. when it's catching up to me, yeah. I can feel it and it feels terrible. I could not imagine like what our parents are experiencing on a daily basis That's in what terms I'm of just like symptoms that they don't even recognize. You know what I mean? Like, but that's wild. Like, it, it's fucking crazy, like, dude. <laughs> my father is, like, an anomaly because, like, he eats, like, garbage and he works out. Like, he does the same workouts for 30 years. Same, yeah. Same weights, like, whatever. Like, he thinks his chest and his arms are big. <laughs> like, that's all he does fucking is fast. the chest and the arms. No legs, no legs. No abs. No cardio. Like, that's, like, that's, like, Satan to him, you know? But his... His mental well-being, like his outlook on life, he's like the most positive guy ever. I, it's cra- <laughs> it's crazy to me. Like really honestly, is. like if he did have a problem, he uses his mind to like psych Just himself wish out it of it. Away. Yeah, like, like he's by no means in good shape. Yeah, you know, but like, <laughs> like they're, they're he's happy. That's like, what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, like he's, yeah. But he's eating. He eats like garbage. He doesn't. He doesn't drink pop like dude. my mom. That's the big yeah, thing. The, oh, like, yeah. It's the soda, oh, yeah, dude. Huge. And I mean, oh. even the fucking diet sodas. Like, my dad is like. It's fucking crazy. I, see, I watch him drink the diet sodas all the time. And I'm like, you know, you're not fucking helping yourself Doing at anything. all. Right? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Like, if you. Yeah, it, it, for a lot of people, if you're wearing like a CGM, a con- continuous glucose monitor, um, or like just take a, you know, like a blood sugar sample after you have like a diet coke that has these artificial sweeteners in it you'll actually see that you'll have a blood sugar drop which it's like okay if you're just looking myopically at blood sugar which is like just terrible that like the the doctors are doing this but if you just look at that it's like oh well you know it, it actually lowered your blood sugar that's a good thing what's actually happening is that like you're having the same insulin spike that you would from eating sugar but there's just no sugar in there to, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, you're not getting the blood sugar rise. You're just getting the blood sugar fall because insulin's job is to pull sugar out of the blood. So, like, that shows that, like, that zero-calorie sweetener really is not fucking 
it's not helping at all, no. especially as a diabetic. No, like, but it but it like, sells. Yeah, yeah. It, oh yeah, it, it, it fucking sells. You know, zero calories. Everybody's all about the fucking calories nowadays. Like the calories that they don't even use. Yeah. If they actually studied like nutrition or like chemistry in general, they'd understand that calories is a form of it's ener- just energy. It's yeah. energy, yeah. right? And they go zero calories. That's great. Like yeah, no, you only want zero calories if you're a fucking vegetable. Yeah. Like you want calories so you can burn them off. Yeah. You know? Exactly. But everybody is literally like trying to be so sedentary. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That is the goal. Yeah. And the problem is, is like when it comes to calories specifically, it's like if all you're gonna do is cut calories, you just keep cutting. Eventually, like you run out of fucking calories to cut, dude. There's no more left. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. die. It gets to the point where like your metabolism is like 900 calories. It's like sure, you, you might look okay, or maybe you look a little emaciated because you've been fucking starving yourself. We got somebody like, like that at work. Yeah, but it's yeah, like he's, he's but it, it's like, dude, like what happens when you decide to go back to living a normal life and now you have this like completely destroyed metabolism? Because you're only burning a thousand calories a day, and like you need to eat eighteen hundred calories a day just to get like adequate nutrition. Like, but what if people are just burning a thousand and then eating five hundred? Then you're anorexic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which like, yeah, I've been around it. It's fucking wild to me, and it's it's a mental thing. Just like we talked earlier about yeah. the suicide thing. Like, yeah, it matters like what you're putting into your body, or maybe not having a sense of community, yeah, and your stuff. environment, or all that yeah. stuff. There's a whole bunch of different factors and stuff, and like with the anorex, it's the beauty standard. Yeah, which I blame a lot on social media, but even before, even before social media, yeah, even before that, yeah. it's just it's, media. It's just the, the media beauty general, standard yeah. for the media. Yeah, fucking hate it. Yeah, stupid. What a bunch of idiots. I know. I'm sorry. What a bunch <laughs> I know. Of fucking Dude, idiots. and like I feel bad for women especially because like they get it, it comes, worse than we when do. When it comes to like not only is there the beauty standard, but it's like they're like everything that women are you talk to the average woman about exercise and they're like completely just wrong. Like and not you know, nothing offe- no, no offense to anybody whatsoever, but it's like if you if you talk to the average woman about about like how do you, how are you gonna lose weight? What's your what's your goal? Well, I mean, if you say, but hold on, if you say average woman, you also have to ask the average man. Yeah, and he is going to be just as fucking clueless. Yes, but trust me, but trust but, me, but, but okay. Like let me let me just let me just finish this thought. Here. All right, all okay. Right, all right. So most women, in order to lose weight, they're cutting calories. Yes, they're going to the gym. And they're going on the elliptical for like an hour, an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah, and just, that's like all they're doing is they're just doing cardio for they're not doing fucking any an hour. They're yeah, not doing any true. weights. Yeah. When you do that, you the, you have to think not about the – not about like, oh, I'm burning calories right now in this moment. No. Mm-hmm. You have to think about the adaptation that's going to occur from that. If you were in if – you, if you were out in the wild and you were getting chased by a bear – yeah, you're going to lose weight because, like, you know, you're burning those calories and your body is, like, your body's job now is to get smaller because yeah. it makes you a more efficient runner, mm-hmm. okay? But the problem with that is that they've they've done studies showing that you're losing, like, an equal part, an equal part, equal parts muscle and fat. So the part of you that you wanted to get rid of you're, you can get you can lose a little bit the fat yeah the fat. but the muscle that's actually keeping your metabolism high yeah. and helping you burn those They're calories also losing that. muscle is literally the number one predictor of longevity like if you want to live a long life lift weights it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman yeah, and like women always, I've talked to so many women about this. Yeah, they're not about the. And they're well, like, they, "Oh, I don't want to get big and bulky." You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, they don't want to be it's too like, muscular. It's, if you fucking think that you're gonna turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger by going to the gym and lifting, you are sadly mistaken. But like, dude, but they they have this beauty standard. Like, like the point originally was women have it way worse with the beauty yeah. standard, which is you know like. There's there's dad bods like yeah. men can have I know. dad men bods can have love a big it gut. yeah well, yeah but the yeah. women your bellies are in right now women dude. love that because it's a sense of like security yeah. in yeah. my from the women I have talked to about that um, if you ask men about their idea of fitness some of them are just like no to cardio yeah They're like that's not gonna build muscle yeah but at the same time like you need to do cardio for a healthy heart yeah you know yeah no i mean there's definitely a time and a place for cardio but most women don't even want to like even look a little tone yeah but they see, just think muscle. Well, the problem the problem is is that women think that like estrogen in terms of women does not work the same as testosterone in terms of men yeah it's, it's completely like, different me- testosterone is there 
for the sake of building. Like, you know, it's for a man. A man goes to the gym and he lifts. He's gonna put on some muscle, and yeah, he's gonna he's gonna get a little bulkier. For a woman, it's only going to accentuate the parts of the female like physique that they want to accentuate. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. Well, no, they don't want to. Because well, no, of that I mean beauty. it's going to give them a flatter stomach. Well, it's going to give them like you know a tighter waist. It's going to it's going to give them exactly what they it, want. It comes with the but, arm. But it's they the just arms, don't. Though. But they but like they just like are so they've been so convinced they've been so like lied to that like this is the only way for a woman to get that physique. And I mean men fall victim to this too. You know what I mean? Of course. It's not just well, women. I mean like this... but like I just feel bad for them because like I'll I will usually if I go to the gym I will usually see like men you know at least hitting the weights. Women like I'll see them sometimes, but most of the time I just see them like on the ellipticals. I on the see bikes, more women like... doing like squats. Yeah, like legs, which is not a bad thing. No, I mean, legs no, are great. Dude, your legs are your biggest muscle group. If you can do compound movements like a squat, I mean so, like, that's definitely the way to go. Today was actually my first time using a rowing machine okay yeah I, I i'm gonna be honest like probably my next thing oh like yeah. it's literally a lot of people are into it it's dude. literally yeah. just gonna be playing a lot of basketball and just and, rowing and rowing yeah. dude that's it yeah. you know it's like a full body it compound is. movement so i did 20 minutes of rowing straight didn't even take a break to drink water i was i, I don't know i was i was on one he's a right? beast i was a beast yeah you know 20 he's minutes an animal get out of my way um and then I proceeded to bike on the stationary bike for 12 miles, nice. so 32 minutes. Yeah. So it was really like a 52-minute workout. feel phenomenal, but at the same time, I'm like, the rowing machine, the full-body workout is going to be really good for me playing basketball because yeah. it's just a full-body sport. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Um, it definitely is more in line with like the kind of activity that you're doing. You yeah, know what of I mean? course. Yeah. Um, I think – the beauty standards thing that we were taught it's it's such a misconception and i think in the second book i'm writing the hierarchy of habits i am going to talk a lot about uh the beauty standard a little bit maybe a little blurb in the troubleshooting section because it's like most people have this misconception about being healthy or being in shape they see marvel movies they see movies tv shows the media they see these things they see these completely like shredded humans like literally like greek demigod looking people and they're like ah oh, they want to get to that and then when they start they go oh, i can't get to that and i'm yeah. like that's not the point i mean it also reminds me of uh the south park episode with subway with jared where Jared, yeah, Jared yeah, has yeah. AIDS. Yeah, Jared <laughs> like, has AIDS, that's yeah. how he lost all of his weight. Yeah, <laughs> like A E A I D E S. But it's like they have so much help and like so much but money it's, and so it's many their resources. Job. But yeah, exactly. It is their it's, job yeah, to look to like look like that. that. Yeah. yeah, like it, unless you're gonna be that dedicated. Exactly. Like it's it's very difficult to get there, especially like as somebody like myself. I didn't really like work out very much as a kid. Like I was active here and there, but like for the most part, like you know, and I'm I'm paying for it now. You know yeah, what I mean, like, I mean, like it, it's hard to start. Yeah, that you know. Yeah, but that misconception—it's like you don't need to look like that. Like that can be a part of it. Or here, if you're just so driven, you're like, yeah, I want to look like that. That's your number one reason for doing it, and you you kill it and you look like that. That's yeah. great. More, more power, power to you. you. But the the more average person just needs to just to do it to feel feel good. Yeah, like you do it, you release endorphins. Even if you're going on a treadmill and you walk a couple times a week. Like, people that just don't do anything. Dude, really, it's just a matter of, like, uh, like health should come first. Like, just being healthy. Being you know healthy I mean? should come Metabolic before should come, finance. Yes, yes. That's my opinion. Well, that too, yeah. But I just mean, like, it shouldn't just be about the way you look. I mean, like, yeah, if of you're, course. As, as long as you take care of yourself and you're doing what's right, you're doing what you need to do, which, you know, you could ask any, any five nutritionists or fitness gurus and they'll all tell you something different, which is why it's so fucking hard for people to navigate this, you know, this, the space because there's just so much different jargon, so many differing opinions, but it's like, at, at like at the end of the day, like health should be first and foremost. And like, even if you, all, all it really comes down to is like, I think it was like 98% of, of the, um, the insulin sensitivity so insulin resistance is like you know your your body is producing too much insulin because you're constantly being in a fed state eating too much calorie yeah, surplus so it's like so insulin sensitivity is the opposite of that where like you know your insulin's a hormone and when your insulin when the more insulin sens sensitive you are the the better off those those hormones are functioning yeah so if 
it, 98% of the insulin sensitivity just comes from like losing a little bit of weight. It's not like you need to get to like your goal weight, like, you know, have a six pack and everything else in order to be healthy. You People just have, have that to like, yeah, though. yeah. You just have to like, you know, lose a little bit of weight and like start like removing some of those in- inflammatory lifestyle choices i think people really underestimate the power of not eating two hours before you go to bed oh it's huge dude it's, it's fucking yeah, huge yeah, that yeah. is huge there's been so many studies on like how eating before bed is like when i man, disrupts when, your sleep which then like has this cascading effect and on top fucked. of that like when you eat before bed like you're not even you, you, you kind of want to be fasted before you go to bed because then you have like well, your body uh, repair your brain you have, yeah, repairs yeah 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 you're yeah you know? you're repairing yourself and if your body's too focused on digesting the food that you just ate you're yeah. not going to be able to really repair because that's the focus it's yeah, like it's digesting. you know it's going to it's it's going to fuck your sleep up it's going to fuck up like uh human growth hormone another hgh because mm-hmm. a lot of it gets uh released while you're sleeping yeah it fucks and a so, lot of shit yeah up. and so like you know if you're not getting adequate releases of hgh or like some of these other hormones that like these other reparative hormones or this autophagy which is like cellular repair that's happening while you're sleeping like it's gonna have long term cascading effects and it's gonna you know. I was doing it when I was really depressed. Even when I was sober, like my first year being sober, like I was playing a lot of video games, right? I was playing a lot of league. Yeah. Okay. And I was just chugging my e cig. Cause it's like you give up like cocaine, alcohol, and weed, right? You and I'm working fifty hours a week at a job. That means when I come home in the free my free time. Like, I want to do those things, right? Yeah. So I, I, like, instead I ate really bad food and played video games, yeah. obviously. You know, like, I was eating, like, seven burritos a week. Seven like, I was just getting Mexican food, amazing. like, <laughs> every chance I could get, dude. Like, and I'm staying up till 2 or 3 in the morning, right? I'm getting, like, them 1 a.m. burritos. Ooh. Like, I, I am a little more blessed because of my metabolism, but, like, yeah. it, I'm very active. Yeah. So, you know... Like I, I can run that off. Yeah, you know, but you in can't ge- get away with it. But, but it's I was, still like I was feeling like yeah, shit. I was gonna say long sure. term, it's still gonna even, even the, in the even morning. though you look fine, like you yeah, know, I feel like you're shit. still gonna yeah, it's, exactly. exactly. Like, and there are so many, so many like in- influencers and shit out there that are like just like absolutely dissolving themselves, destroying themselves to get to that point. You know, to look like that constantly, like that's so fucked. Yeah. I mean, and they don't tell you that. You no, know what they I don't mean? They just you sell you this lifestyle, this fucking idea. That, Man, like, that's like one this of the, is main, the way it is. It's one of the main things I have a problem with, like most music in the music industry or like popularized radio music. It's yeah. like they they glamorize these lifestyles, and if you maybe ask these people, like if they're happy, like they go, "Yeah, I got all this fucking money," but like, yeah. But like internally, are they? Yeah. Do they have like actual friends? Probably like, not. Are they fulfilled? Probably. Like, not. are these influencers starving themselves? Do they like their life? Yeah. Or they are a business. Yeah. They I are mean, yeah, a machine the at that's, that point. Yeah. You know, and they lose their humanity. Yeah. And then they're pushing that on people, right? And then they're pushing it through the social media yeah. and the screens. And it's what sells, dude. Because it, it's, it's it's sexy, bro. It's like, what sells. Yeah. And then it fucks people yeah, up. Exactly. It's Oh yeah. my god! So it's just like just the d- desire that people I have. Hate you know it. what I mean? Like that's why I'm like I, I hate the social media. I know I got to do it, especially until I like hire someone. Like people got to hear the the podcast. Yeah, you know I'm not really like too focused on my music right now because I I need people to help me with that. Yeah, right. And the issue is I don't really have a lot of people that are sober. Like if you're gonna if you're making music like more more times than not everybody's you're smoking at least smoking and drinking yeah, like yeah. you're going to bars at the over, minimum yeah smoking. at the minimum yeah. you know and it's like I'm not really like comfortable with that of you course know? it's not something I want to be around you know and a couple of the people I've met that do music like that they're very shallow right so I've kind of put the music on the back burner yeah like doing the podcast is a little different I can. I can just do this. We can sit here and bullshit all day, dude. Exactly. And I can bring in other people. They can fucking bullshit, you know? It just, it was unfortunate because, like, the universe, like, almost kind of pushed me in a way. It was like, I don't really have anyone around me that's musically inclined. Yeah. You know? So Mm -hmm. it was almost like me trying to do this all myself. Not to say I can't. You're just trying to do what you can with the resources that you have. Exactly. You know, maybe in a couple years, if I have a little more free time, I can hire someone to, like, help me with it. You know? But I, I feel like my words are a little more important than like 
my musical talent. Yeah, you still point. have a message that you want to convey. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I'm still, like, doing the guitar. That's been great. Yeah, and honestly. I'm sure that's a nice little hobby, too. It is, yeah. yeah. I mean, now that I'm taking it seriously. Yeah. Because I've had the acoustic for, like, seven years, yeah. right? And me learning on my own, it's brutal, dude. I'm not that I feel that, dude. I'm not that guy. Yeah. Like, I did really well in formal education because I knew how to do it. Yeah. I knew how to learn. If I have a teacher oh, dude. that is exactly. more knowledgeable than me, exactly. I will learn. Yeah, I'm know? always all about finding someone you know, who's better best, at it than me. The best resource, yeah. That's like, what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I'm not, like, I'm not so filled with pride that I can't, like, humble myself and learn from people. Dude, I, you know? I want people to share that experience with or me. Or that knowledge. Yeah, because yeah. then it's like, I don't have to go and learn the hard way. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, like, with the... Like the music I was learning on YouTube, brutal. Oh yeah, fucking hated. Oh it, yeah, you know. I mean, dude, even like I've tried taking some of those like online classes, like yeah, you know, that are in so, like those modular type classes, even some free ones and some paid ones, and it's like it's fucking. You know, I don't even really know like how much shit I remember from those yeah, classes. I know. <laughs> like I'm an in person kind of guy. Same here. So yeah. I got like a guitar yeah. tutor who comes by every other week, and he helps me with just like yeah basic shit you definitely know definitely the way to do it yeah that's what i'm saying yeah. so i'm i'm definitely, for me at least i mean yeah i'm all yeah for me too yeah. i mean obviously i know some people are different but i know some people who are just like savants and they can just like learn it on their own yeah. like just straight up yeah i mean i think everybody's kind of like that with uh, with some things something like with but like like i don't know like with gloving or like writing for me like poetry or like philosophy or just writing in general like i didn't have anyone teach me that shit yeah right like i didn't take any writing courses either yeah besides like the ones we were required to in high school Mm -hmm. you know otherwise it was just like me doing it like myself yeah you know um but not everything i'm able to do that with yeah i I mean mean, like so i'm I'm, i have a couple things that i'm like self-taught in that i would say like i'm i'm decent at you know i mean like i'm self-taught in bookkeeping i'm self-taught i uh actually taught myself how to do beverage formulation because it's just one of those things that, like, is going to be very expensive for me to hire every time I have to, like, of come course. up with a new flavor or something like that. Yeah. Or, like, graphic design was another one. I started when I was really young, and there was a need for it because my family owns a silk screening and embroidery business, yeah. as you know. And they needed, you know, they needed somebody to do it. And so I was just like, fuck it. We got the software. Like, I'll, I'll mess around it. with it, see what I can figure out. Yeah. Eventually, I did great skill to have yeah you know what i mean so i mean there's some things but then there's other things where it's like i could not like take a just a course on like day trading you know what i mean like could you imagine like i i personally just my brain doesn't work like that i would rather have someone teach me something like that in person yeah exactly like i'd rather have somebody sit down with me and just be able to go through that and like they make their trades and like I would sit there with a piece of paper and make my own so I'm not spending any money and then yeah, like, like, be, be ha- hold my hand every step of the way please like I yeah. want you to you know what I mean like please, so I don't yeah, fuck up yeah unless I'll, I tell you otherwise like tell me exactly what I should be doing yeah and and so you don't get discouraged yeah that's like a huge problem with people picking up new things is they fail once or twice and they're like the same for me yeah and it's like man to be good at something you got to fuck up a lot. Yes. All right? You oh, got to yeah. fail yes. a lot. And we're just, as a, I think as a species, we've gotten worse with that. Yeah. Everyone's so fragile right I now. I know. I mean, myself I know. included. I you know. know like I, I'm, I'm right there with we're, you. We're all the same. I think it's getting worse, though. Mm-hmm. Like, the minute we fail, it's it's like. So discouraging. My God. Yeah. The whole world just. Yeah, it's like, why the fuck am I even trying? Exactly. Yeah. I'm just going to go back to my comfort zones but. and. But that's not how we should be. Yeah, that's what like, se- I mean. That's that's what separates successful people from unsuccessful people. Of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm very so. I I've said I'm very nihilistic. I'm pessimistic sometimes. That's that's probably just came with the drugs. I am very optimistic to think that not like not everyone can be an Einstein, but I think everybody has the potential to be something great. Yeah. You know, obviously, yeah. I think that society has just done a really good job at making people think they're normal yeah really you know? locking people into a box exactly and like not allowing them to think outside of it and it's not to say that even everybody needs to be a dreamer some people just want to live their normal yeah. lives but at least be healthy yeah like fuck at least some people don't even care about that they don't even care a lot of, a lot of people don't care about it. i mean i think it's something like 
only 12 percent of the u.s population is considered metabolically healthy that's fucking crazy dude it it is it is and that was like can you imagine a a statistic can you imagine if like an actual catastrophe happened oh i know doomsday like armageddon i know those 12 percenters not even all of them are gonna survive yeah yeah. but the but the other 88 percent they're at a huge disadvantage oh they are at a huge disadvantage i mean fuck Especially the old people. Oh yeah, I, yeah. man, I got and not it. even the old people. Like, I mean, even people our parents' age. I mean, sure, my dad just turned, or my dad's about to be sixty, but it's yeah. like he doesn't look like he, you know he doesn't look like he's sixty. Like, if you look at him, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't guess that he's sixty. He no, no. But still, like, just knowing, like, his body is definitely, even though he's about to be sixty, his body's probably closer to fucking eighty. You know what I mean? Like, with how he treats yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I got, I got a family member who is definitely, like, 10 years older than their actual age yeah. because of oh, how yeah. they treat themselves, Oh yeah, you know? And it, it's fucking depressing. Totally, dude. <laughs> I mean, fuck. Like, you want to, like, help people, but, like, fuck, can we even help ourselves? Sometimes it's like I... I, I sometimes I, can't. Man, dude, I have, <laughs> like... Sometimes I feel like I have all this good information, and I do, like, I've tried in the book, you know? It's pretty dense, which is why I need an editor, but sometimes I can't even practice what I preach. Yeah, of you know, course. everybody's a hypocrite, dude. Come on, it's fucked. <laughs> I mean, like I understand. I'm one of the biggest. <laughs> I mean, we're not perfect. Like yeah. I understand that, but shit, I feel like we just got to try a little harder. Yeah. God. No, absolutely. Man, be okay with fucking up every once in a while. You know what I mean? It's okay to not be human. Just as, like, like I think the eighty twenty rules is a good rule to stand by. What's that? Some eighty percent of the time you do it, you have to, and the other twenty percent, like you know, you kind of a little bit of leeway. Yeah, just chilling. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, I, I mean, you could do, use anything, like diet, for instance. Like, yeah, you know, I, I think eighty eighty twenty is a good rule. Like, if eighty if eighty to ninety percent of the time, like you're eating what you're supposed to, That's and you're true. doing what you're supposed okay, to. Okay, yeah, yeah. The yeah, other yeah. ten to twenty percent of the time, it's like you know, you can you can get away with having ice cream tonight. With your significant, I mean, you know me, man. Yeah, trust me, I know you. I'm definitely the the ice cream man over here for sure. Like, I do really well, like five days out of the week, six days out of the week. Yeah, but man, dude, once I get some of that ice cream, oh, I know, over, dude. And and the worst part is, it's a snowball effect. Yeah, because then fucking, it's like, well, I already, I already made mistakes today. Let's, I'm doing tomorrow, (laughs) all right. And then the whole rest of the week, like Monday through Thursday, like responsible. Me on the inside is like, all right, meal prep, workout, we're gonna do all this, and then it's just in the back of my head, like, we can go get ice cream. Yeah, like we can. Yeah, we are able to go get sweets. Dude, we I can always, get them. I always fall victim to like the uh, like. It's like you know, if if I don't work out Monday or Tuesday, by the time Wednesday comes around, it's like you know, I'll just try again next week. Wow, like, uh, like, damn, I know that. You know, I, <laughs> you know I know I mean? that feeling. And though. I know that there are plenty of other people out there that have that same mindset. It's of like, course, uh, of course. Sometimes, like sometimes, it's like this. Yeah, you know, I always have this. Like a, a lot of the times, and I, and I know I'm not the only one, but like this whole. I'll just I, tomorrow will be better. Tomorrow will be the day that I see. Bro, it. always. You know I, what I mean, I, every, that, all, every day. That's every day literally in. That's literally in my book. Yeah. Like I've literally, I actually wrote a paragraph about it where it's like, so I have this vision of quitting what I'm supposed to be quitting, and to celebrate me coming to this realization about my life, I'm going to do these bad habits one last that time. That you should be quitting today <laughs> as <Exactly>. celebration <laughs> for the future me that is exactly. going to beat this. Exactly, right? dude. And then you'll look back at that and be like, dude, then, that was like fucking that was like 2 weeks ago and I've still Bro, that been was doing like those things that was like 2 day. years ago. Yeah, and and you I'm, literally And I'm still doing those fucking things. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucked. That's what I'm it's saying terrible, though. Dude. Terrible. I mean, Just play these little games with ourselves. The worst the worst part was like the porn for me I've kind of talked about that a little bit with you off the podcast but yeah. like like with the alcohol like there was an actual physical mental problem picture with it right so like it was easy to quit it's like this is killing me yeah with the porn it was almost like when the thought came across my head I was like well I had the thought already I'm gonna get this yeah. over with yeah you know heart starts racing fuck it. yeah I'm like I just I yeah. need to get it's rid time. of this <laughs> exactly but I'm the urge is there exactly but that's the same thing with like ice cream I'm like I gotta just do this or like a cupcake if there's yeah. cupcakes or cookies yeah. around I'm like I'm gonna get that yeah. shit it's like you know I'm just gonna have ice cream that's like you know what I'm gonna, there's brownies and there's cookies. I'm gonna have one of each of those. Like as I'm well. gonna be better tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like yeah, I deserve this. That's the other thing. It's yeah, like, yeah. Everybody fucking deserves everything. Yeah, in, in their own eyes. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like that's the other thing. Like yeah, even if you do think you deserve it, like 
Are we that self entitled? Like, yeah, we we are. I know. I've I I fall victim to it all the yeah, time. Me too. Like, oh, I fucking deserve this. Like, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I really don't. I mean, sometimes you just gotta shoot it straight with yourself. Exactly. It's a bitch, though. Exactly, dude. <sighs> yeah, I'm I'm kind of getting better at that. I guess. I mean, like. Last weekend for Memorial Day, I ate a lot of cupcakes, bro. Yes, like I'm did. talking, like, like I said, like 15 <laughs> in like in two days. That sounds like a dream. Holy fuck, <laughs> they were so good. They were homemade lemon raspberry. Oh, that sounds amazing. Get out of here. That's not even talking about the cake and the fudge and the cookies that were surrounding yeah. the cupcakes because yeah. I had all of that too. Yeah, we went to uh, Molly's Cupcakes and then took a couple cupcakes to. Jackie's uh, aunt and uncle's house. Nice, and we were just chilling there. Yeah, that'll, and yeah, dude, that'll fucking get you. They they fucked me up. It's a snowball, man. Yep. I mean, sat there eating dip like con- that's the other problem. Like, dude, like chips and dip. Woo. Sheesh. Woo. Sheesh. Sheesh. Like, <laughs> get the fuck out of here, dude. I'm about to just slam sit there that. and just keep eating it and eating it and eating it. That's and like, it's like such a white person thing to dude, say, though. Like, get these away from me. I, I know. It's, ooh, kid. these are dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> ooh, these are bad. <laughs> Don't ooh, mind if I do. Take these away from me. Yeah, get these away from me. I can't. <laughs> like, all right, calm down. <laughs> but, like, we actually say those things. Yes. <laughs> Fuck. So what what else you got going? You got, like, any, any hobbies you're getting into? Like, I know, like, we're, we're working a lot. You got the wedding coming up. Yeah. So, like. You have to make a habit out of like stashing away money. Yeah. You know, and then there's the house that fell through. I had a condo that fell through. But you're always saving up for that (laughs) if you're renting. Yeah. You know? So anything else other than. Bro, I've just been trying to make more money. I feel that. That's that's all I can do, especially with like just looking at how much fucking gas is and. That's crazy. The subsequent cost of goods. Excuse me. Increasing. Um. Yeah, I mean, I just all I can do right now is just, just make more make money. more money yeah. and just hope I don't f- just keep trying to pour all this water out of this fucking sinking ship because that, <laughs> that's like I'm sure I'm not I I know I'm not the only one out there right no, now. No, we're all that probably way, feeling the like, same way. <laughs> I mean, I picked up extra shifts at GQ. Yeah, obviously. So Tuesday and Wednesday has been really fucked for me because like I've been trying to work on this book and shit, you know, yeah. and. I've been trying to meal prep and I've been trying to still hold down a relationship with Lisa and then there's still family and then there's friends yeah. and there's all this shit. Oh, yeah. So Tuesday I, I literally work nine to five. Then I have my guitar lesson and then I go and press like for two hours and then I come home. So that's like a 10, 11 hour day. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. I just can't go to the gym that day. Yeah. I can't cook food that day. Dude. Like, and I'm saying can't, and there might be people listening to this podcast like, oh, you're just not motivated. Yeah, bro, you're yeah, just you not trying that. hard enough. Yeah. Fucking get Joe in here, dude. He'll tell L- you. Listen, <laughs> 28-year-old John is not the same as 22-year-old John. No. 22-year-old me be like, I have the energy for yeah. this. But I'm not going to come home at 9 o'clock and make a cup of coffee. I have a- as much coffee as everyone thinks I do drink, which it's a lot. I do have limits most of the time. Of course. Like, during the middle of the week, like, yeah. or I should say Sunday to Thursday – there's no coffee yeah. after like six. I was gonna say drinking like even then that's a little late, but that's better than nine. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, of course. Well, sometimes if I come over by you guys on a Friday, yeah, oh yeah, it's just totally. been a long fucking totally, week, dude. I mean, like, and you know, it's Friday, like that's what I'm saying. I usually, we're we're getting old, dude. It's like how the fuck else are we supposed to keep hanging am out I supposed, past midnight? You know how what am I mean? I? Like we're gonna need some fucking caffeine now. Exactly. <laughs> and I did. I drank a coffee before I came over last night. Yeah. But I came home. We got home late too. It was like twelve thirty. Yeah. And I played Fire Emblem for like forty five minutes. Yeah, you know, so I was up. Dude, we were up until almost three o'clock watching the boys. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> I can't do that yeah. anymore. I know. I, dude, I was falling asleep by the end of it. I was. We were halfway through the last episode. I was like, dude, you gotta shut this shit off. You gotta. Holy fuck! I gotta. I, gotta, I, I we're, we have to come back to this tomorrow. This almost the whole season. Uh, no, it's only th- it, it, there are our episodes. It was only three episodes. So oh, for the whole season. Well, the first three episodes that just Ew, came out. So yeah. they released them. Yeah. Okay, so it's almost like Arcane. Yeah, I like think how so. they did that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm waiting for that. That's gonna be Dude, good. That's gonna be a great show. Yeah. That's... I mean, people that don't even play League or don't know shit about League are like, yeah, got really ha- good amazing. reviews. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Even mm. Jackie's like, I can't wait for that. We just watched. The animated Witcher oh, on nice. Netflix, fucking good. Nice, yeah, hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh really? Too. Oh yeah, real good. Yeah, it's uh, who's the uh, 
the head of the witchers in the real show. So you know how Geralt, there's Geralt and like a couple witchers left. Yeah. You know the old guy? What's his name? Besimir? I know. I don't I don't know. The guy with the white hair, though. The older okay. guy, right? Yeah, the guy who's like, yeah, okay. It's I, him. I know who you're talking about. The animated show is him. Yeah. Younger, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like what they're doing with, like, Fantastic Beasts or whatever it's, with, like, Dumbledore and shit. It's the story leading up to why they can't make witchers. Okay. Like, that whole catastrophe gotcha. that happened. Yeah, it was really yeah. good. You know, pretty gory. Very, uh, it was animated very well. So, that was cool. Um, watching that Viking show. Nice. Pretty gory. So, you were bringing up the animated Witcher series actually reminds me. Uh, after we got done watching The Boys, we found out that The Boys also just came out. I think it was March of this year. They came out with uh, a little animated series, too. And they're just, like, random. Like, some of them are, like, kind of side stories or, like, s- like pre-stories that explain certain things. Yeah, little snippets. And uh, the cool part was is that so we're watching the first one, and, you know, I didn't really think anything of it. It was kind of it was almost like Looney Tune style. Um, okay. But then we get to the second one, and I was like, this looks just like Rick and Morty. And so, <laughs> I That's and then, funny. like, I'm listening, and it's like, even the same voice actors that you find in Rick and Morty. Really? And then I went on, you know, I went on online, good old Google Wikipedia, and found out that um, Justin Roiland actually, like, was the one who wrote and directed the episode. No shit. And so he's, his voice is in it as well. And then, so I was looking at the other, uh, there's eight episodes total, um, and they're, each episode is made by a different, like, animation house. Okay. And so some of them, I think there was, I forgot exactly what the name of one of them was, but they actually, like, helped with, like, Attack on Titan and Castlevania and, like, a couple. Oh, okay. And so, like, Wait, was, which studio? Um, I want to say. It's not Wit Studio, is no, it? No, it was. Uh, it's not Mappa. Hold or on. Or is it Mappa? I Mappa's it. coming up. I, I know you to, don't like watch build. anime like I do, but like Mappa's really big right now. Um, Day Art Stagio? I don't know. I have no idea. But uh, yeah, the first episode was written by Seth Rogen. Okay. The seventh episode was written by Andy Samberg. No oh, shit. Don Cheadle like play, has like a voice character in it. Like there's so like a lot of a d- lot of different uh, celebrities and like people that are you know actors and actors. Was it on Netflix? Involved. It's on uh, Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. But yeah, it was it was interesting because then like like because like because there was a different studio for each one. Mm-hmm. They all like look completely different and like the stories are completely different. And so, yeah, like they're, but even like the, the cadence of the story is completely different. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, well, it's probably it was, a different director. Each yeah, exactly. Yeah. Different directors, yeah. different studios, different animation styles, Just a different point of view, like, of yeah. different stories. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's exactly. kind of cool. It's so. like a compilation almost. Yeah. That's, that's what it was. It was like, they partnered with all these different studios and we're like, each one of you guys make an episode and then we'll just mash them all together. It was pretty cool. It was, it was interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm like two episodes into that Shorzy show. It's pretty good. It's pretty funny. Yeah. I thought it was pretty funny. I yeah. Mean, like I said yesterday, Shorzy is probably one of the best parts of letter kenny oh for sure so absolutely yeah i'll take a whole show where he's just chirping the whole time yeah fuck yeah yeah give your balls a tug okay fucker yeah come on i love it <laughs> trying to not watch as much tv though i you feel know? you god i'm and not I, really a, a I kind TV of watcher i anyway. kind of fell off the wagon with reading you know like yeah. lisa reads a fuck ton let's see like i said she reads, i wish in a fantasy novel she'll read like 200 pages in an hour that's fucking crazy it's out of it's it's out of yeah. this world i can't but i also have a really bad attention span yeah you've met my oh, father yeah. it's he like lisa even said like i definitely have like some type of add yeah it's not it wasn't Don't bad at all yeah, but it, <laughs> she said specifically it wasn't bad enough for them to diagnose me growing up. Yeah. Because she's like, yeah, you got really good grades, so they're like, oh, this isn't a problem. Yeah. Like, if I yeah. didn't get good grades, they'd probably have thrown me on Ritalin. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, some some kind of shit yeah, like that. Maybe not ADD, ADHD, like hyperactivity disorder, or you constantly just need to be fucking stimulated yeah, these little somehow. tics. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, dude, if I don't have, like, if I don't have, like, my phone or I'm not on my computer, like, I'm just sitting there, like, poking Jackie or fucking, like, whatever. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, doing like, something. Dude, like, just being annoying as fuck. Like, yeah. I think, like, two, I, have the, I have some problems. I, I think we're just overstimulated. Yeah. As a, a, a Just constantly need to be occupied. Like, some way. Yeah, and it's, it's just terrible. 
Lisa says I have a problem relaxing. I do. All right. Because even on like my days off that I'm not working a job, it's like I have to work on my dream. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I have to either fulfill your duties. I have to like because I don't want to work this nine to five my whole life. So, you know, you're planning only one way you're going to get there. Exactly. And as a writer, too, or a, a creative person in general, like sometimes you just can't force it. Right. So say I get a Saturday off and I might write a little bit. And those days I get, like, down and I can't relax because I'm, like, I should be, like, working yeah. hard. But if I'm not, like, inspired, then I'm just, like, well, fuck this. Yeah, and then know? it's, like, a fucking vicious cycle where, like. Yeah, and then I, like, go and do something. You some- feel bad about yourself yeah, because exactly. you're not inspired. So then you go do something else that makes you feel even worse. Exactly. Like, to, like, pass the time. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And then, like, at the end of the day, you're just, like, dude, today was just fucking. I didn't do anything. Completely unproductive. Yeah, and, exactly. Like, just, the, the like. The, I took steps back today. You know what I mean? Like when I shouldn't. Yeah. But in those days, I know like I just I do have to get better at just like relaxing. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Like taking a deep breath. Dude, R and R is huge. It is huge. A lot of people are just go, 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 go. It's gonna be a lot easier to hit some R and R when you're living in the Midwest and it's the summer, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a little hard to do some R and R when you're in the winter, you know, in my opinion, unless you're gonna go on a vacation. But I just feel like in this room right here, my study or at work or in my bedroom, there's always things that I could be doing. Yeah. So it's hard for me to, like, turn my mind off. Totally. You know? Which is definitely, like, something I should practice, like, meditation. Yeah. You know, I was meditating a lot in college when I was studying Buddhism. But it's a routine. That's a thing. Yeah. And now, like, after- Like, one meditation session is not going to do anything. No. It needs to be, like, part of, yeah, part of your daily habits. Either that or you just need to start out with, like doing it once a week yeah you know yeah just consistency consistent yeah well i mean with anything consistency yeah consistency is key but yeah something like meditation for sure oh yeah. my god and that was four years ago i was probably meditating like four or five times a week yeah right i was meditating a lot and those were like i'm sure you felt great amazing yeah they were 10 to 20 minute sessions too yeah. so nice, i was finally, grounded relaxed it was crazy calm it was a whole focused di- i yeah. gotta get back to that yeah but you see at, so i just said that was four years ago right mm-hmm Now, take four years of, like, stimulation, right? That's what happened. Yeah. And there was a year of drinking in there, too. Mm -hmm. So after having the routine of, like, calming the mind through meditation and getting that perspective, now you do four years of overstimulation, recovering from addiction, looking at screens all day. Like, now if I try and meditate – like a five minute meditation. Yeah. And there's like, so much static while you're doing it. My God. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it's just I gotta get back to it. Yeah. It's way different. Like that chair you're sitting in right now, that lazy boy, it's fucking, oh, yeah. fucking key for Nice it. and lazy oh, for yeah. me. I think like a couple weeks ago I did I did a meditation. It was five minutes, but it was in that chair too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gotta get back to that. I actually meditated recently. I like Nice. I had I don't really have too many electronics in my kitchen, so I went and just sat on my kitchen floor one day nobody was home i just all the windows were open it was a nice day outside that sounds divine. And i just sat there for like five ten minutes and just meditated it was nice yeah yeah that sounds really yeah, nice it was I, I got up and i felt way better than i did <laughs> when i sat down but what what got you to that point did what honestly ha- i was just like i don't know i was just stressing and i, I was, was like yeah. you know what i'm literally just gonna like go breathe and just relax and, like, I just listened to the birds chirping and, like, tried to clear my head the best that I could and just breathe through it. And, yeah, it was it's nice. crazy. Yeah. It's crazy that we have to be in such a bad place for us to, like, turn to something like that. Yeah. Though. Like like how you said, it's got to be a consistent routine. Yeah. That way we can. It's not consistent it's, for me. It's like, not. It's just something that, you know, it's more like. Like the time I did it three weeks ago, I was also stressing. Yeah. And I had to get out of my head, you know. I didn't want to turn my TV on or pick up my phone, right? So what drives us to get there is this overstimulation. We need to make, like, a a routine of it. Yeah. The whole world does, though. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to say COVID's over. I don't, I don't really care. We're not, we're not even – I'm going to be honest. We're not going to talk about that on this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Good. Nobody. Good. Nobody that I bring on here, if you're going to bring up COVID, you can get out. Good. I just I mean, don't. 
I, I'm willing to talk about COVID, but do I want to talk about COVID? I don't. Not That's really. what I'm saying. I don't <laughs> want to. Like, not like, no. I'm sorry. That's it. People died. It sucks. Let's yeah. let's keep moving on. Yes. All right. But I'm gonna say it's post COVID. So like a lot of bad habits happened during COVID for people because we got shut down and locked up in our place, like our houses, yeah, yeah. you know. And then these bad habits like snowballed and stuff too. Yeah. But now we have to be reminded again that we're human. You know, we aren't machines working from home that have all of our food ordered to our doorstep while we sit on our phones all day. We have to be reminded that we need more than that. Yeah. We need interaction. Dude, COVID was rough for me, man. Like It was I, rough for everybody. It was rough for everybody, yeah. yeah. I mean, like... I'm it surprised was, it, it we, hit I, you as I hard. I came out on... Well, so I'm talking, like, just... I'm not even talking, like, getting COVID. We could talk about that, too, but, like... Yeah, it was more like the whole Just, like, the whole... Yeah, like, the whole instance of COVID. Like, just going from... You know, I was... I, what, I, Prior to COVID, like, I was in what I would consider the best shape of my life. Yeah. I was, you know, going to martial arts, like, yep. every that. fucking night, working out in the morning, and then going to martial arts at night, like, lift, you know, getting my lifts in, making sure that I was active every day, focusing on my sleep and everything else. And then COVID hit, and it's like all of those habits that I formed are well, just completely Gone. erased. Yeah. Like, and, you know, I, I was left to pick up the pieces. But, like, even, you know, my, my partner was working from home the entire time too yeah and so like now i'm sharing the space with her when normally like during the day i would have all that time to myself and yep. like it was it, it, just a change you know what i mean like it's just like it was, just it was so some, many so many changes it was that something happened. that you and the rest of the world wasn't ready for yeah because exactly. like i said last night like the whole working from home thing a lot of people in our generation love it yeah okay yeah I fucking hate yeah, it. Yeah, and there are plenty of people I out there that don't like it. Not can't do it. handle it. Yeah, I can't handle yeah. it. I, can't. I mean, I've always worked from home, so for me, nothing changed. Yeah, like of from course. that perspective. But there were a lot of people that are like, you know, like either they just don't feel as productive at home, or I'm you know, too they distracted, just don't feel cramped. They need to leave their house. Like, yeah, they can't stay. Like, yeah, and that totally makes sense. Yeah, well, that was the thing. I didn't really pick up a lot of bad habits during it um because i actually went around and like found different weight sets and i had like three three sets of dumbbells here and because i could still go outside at the time we weren't like we didn't have such a bad lockdown like europe where it's like yeah you're not going outside yeah like martial yeah. law yeah. type yeah. china shit. like yeah right, exactly like right now like <laughs> you like it was still kind of, like you didn't see people outside you know, yeah. during the months, I think it really hit us late March. So yeah. April, May, and June, I was walking a lot. Yeah. I was taking an hour walk every single day, and I was working out in here. I just remember, like, going downtown or, like, you know, being on the highway and it being completely empty. Yeah, it was, it empty. was fucking eerie, dude. It was, it was weird. It was weird. Yeah. I, but I made – I don't know what set me off when it all happened, but I was like, I'm going to come out of this in a way better shape than – what whatever's happened into the world right now and by the time it was july or august and i was moving in with jesse yeah like i had put on 20 pounds of muscle nice right yeah, so like i, I just that. like no bullshit i did take like going my, for it I, I did go for it i've stayed pretty consistent with it i mean nearing the end of uh living in glendale i got a little lazy mm -hmm. you know yeah but i mean there were other issues too though i remember yeah <laughs> i was playing a lot of basketball at least um. Yeah, like I was playing a lot of basketball, so that kind of kept me in shape. But I stopped like lifting, you yeah. know. And then when I got here, when I moved back into here, yeah. I was playing a lot of league. Yeah, for those two months, my man. Yeah, <laughs> that, you know, man, dude. If if something fucked up happens in my life now that I got rid of like my bad addictions, like the cocaine, the alcohol, or whatever, it's it's definitely the video games, you know. Oh yeah, dude. And, and you're talking to hold on. It's not. <laughs> the video games i'm playing right now yeah like my retro games my my ds yeah. my my sp or my wii yeah like or the switch yeah like i can know life a game for a week right but and then I'm, be good after but i'm good for like yeah. a month or two yeah you know yeah um with league it's just the gift that keeps on giving oh man Trust it's, me. it's so addictive Trust me. it's crazy to... it's so competitive though that's the th yeah that, oh, that's yeah. what i loved about it yeah you know because if you've met my family 
To, it's that so competitive that fucking that that dopamine hit that you get from winning a game dude i mean like yeah fuck. but it's like joe says too it's like even when you lose you're like i have to get better i need yeah yeah and yeah, when you win yeah. you're not satisfied you're like i can do yeah. even better yeah, yeah, you know yeah i mean like it does feel good when you're just stopping somebody out and lane. yeah of course and fucking get, like, sometimes though like three or four kills and if i'm like 12 oh and five those feelings are good yeah you're yeah, like a exactly. whole you're item like, bro, I'm, I'm fucking i'm carrying right yeah you're now, carrying dude. hard and as it fuck. feels good to carry 15 minutes into yeah, the game yeah you until know? you lose and then it's like my fucking legs hurt from carrying so i'm still <laughs> lost like and then you go in for another game after that. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. And it's just that addictive. So I think – hold on. Let me uh, – how long has it been? It's been a while since I played League. 251 days. Wow. I know. That's crazy. Isn't it crazy? It's been I've, almost a year. I've never gotten to a year since I started playing. Yeah. I've gotten close to, I believe, when I was 20 or 21, I got close to a year. Um. I'm get I'm getting there this time though. Do you feel deprived at all? No. No. Deprived? Yeah. You mean of like life? No, like just of like pleasure. No. No. Nope. I feel empowered. It's unbelievable. It's crazy. So like as I get rid of like vices, like obviously this is like a lot of my writing or like the book that I'm going to write, it it's insanely empowering to get addicted to something. And then get rid of it. Yeah. It's it's fucking crazy. Totally. So getting rid of League, I d- it was brutal at first, but you replace it with different types of pleasure. Yeah. Right? So, like I said, I'm not completely done with video games. Of every, course. Every once in a while, I'll pick up a video game. Yeah. You know, because – but I don't play like – you know my style of video game I play. Yeah. It's all strategy. Yeah. Like, my mind always has to be yeah, working. Yeah, totally. You're in, you, know? you know, it's all about thinking and making the right moves. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's yeah. almost – I always just, like, pick versions of chess. You're not just, like, mindlessly killing people. Yeah. I, like, I, and even then, I mean, like, there's still some level of strategy and engagement there. Yeah, of course. But, like, I just – Not nearly know. as much. I'm, I'm not – Well, I'm not an FPS player. No, so. no, me yeah. neither. That was, like, high school for me. Yeah. You know? Um, but sometimes I'll – like I said, you find different – pleasures to have so like i got rid of league i started playing even more basketball yeah um i started reading more i've actually started reading more in the last two years than i've ever read before in my life because i've I've just been a bad reader yeah you know like how we were talking about education like having a teacher i'm definitely a visual person like if my teacher is just like standing there telling me information and using stuff on the board like, I'm soaking that in. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel that. Me too. Um, but like, Some people can't learn like that, but yes. No, they can't. Yeah. And what were we talking about again? I have, like, onset dementia. I'm not, <laughs> even, I'm not even kidding, dude. It runs in my family, dude. Sometimes I'm just, like, talking, and it's gone. I think we were talking about whether or not you feel deprived. Yeah, so you, so you just replace different uh, – Yeah pleasures you know with like um, things that still are pleasurable but also productive exactly like the reading yeah um, so or like you playing more basketball like you enjoy it but also like it's good you're for getting you a, yeah you're getting benefit from that so like i had to teach myself how to be a better reader because like in school okay i'm gonna i'm gonna be like really honest right now like grade school and high school and even college if there was an assignment for reading Let's just compile every reading assignment that was ever given to me. Are you going to give Spark Notes a plug right now? No. No? <laughs> I'm literally, no, like, I did that for, like, one or two book reports in English. Okay. I'm saying, like, out of all of the reading assignments I was given in my educational career, I probably did, like, 20% of it. Yeah, same here. You know? Yeah. And I just used, like, critical thinking. Yeah, to kind of and, figure it out. And taking notes. Notes yeah. were huge. Like, I took notes in class and made outlines and just studied the shit I wrote. Yeah. So when I go home, I don't, like, do homework. You don't have to deviate. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying, you know? So I had to – because I wasn't a good reader, the last two years I've had to reteach myself or teach myself in general how to read, Yeah. you know? And then there's picking up, you know, different TV shows or animes or stuff. Like, I've never, like, felt – I've never felt deprived getting rid of a vice. Okay. You know? Yeah. Like, it's scary at first. Yeah. You know, it's – you feel empty. Trust me. 
I don't feel devoid of pleasure. I feel like a piece of me has died. Okay. You know, I wouldn't even attribute it to pleasure. Like, it's just a piece of my life yeah. that's gone, yeah. you know? But it, like, you're, you lose a piece of your soul, and then your soul grows into it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. a little hole, and it covers it. Like, fills in. Exactly. Yeah. Like, cells reproduce. Yeah. But I'm going biological on, yeah. like, spirituality right now, gotcha. you know? So y- you lose a piece of it, but it, it comes back, you know? Are you ever going to give up WoW? <sighs> I don't know, man. Uh, I mean, eventually, I'm sure I'll stop playing. But probably. for right now, like, there's still there's still some goals that I that I want to meet before I give it up. So, well, I'm, are they still releasing patches? Yes. So they're. I I don't play retail. Wow, I play the classic version, yeah. which is like the re-release of the original game. Mm-hmm. So I played through the first one. They played through the original re-release. Then I, now I'm playing. We're right in the la- the final patch of the first expansion, and I want to get to the final patch of the second expansion. Okay. And then from there, I'm probably you know. Then from there, it's like childhood. Is complete. So, yeah, nostalgia you know, yeah, is complete. exactly the yeah. nostalgia is uh, that's where I, that's like right around the time when I quit originally, didn't get to experience everything that I wanted to do back then, and I play with uh, you know a really good group of people that I've been playing with for almost three years now. Yeah, so it's a sense of people. community at that exactly, point. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, like there are you know I, I've I've made some pretty good friends, including people that you know I've gone just I, I've met you know within the last two years and i've gone and met them in person and yeah that's I, have, true. I have uh more plans towards the end of the summer to meet uh one of my buddies is going to be uh, at what so one of my friends lives in uh like bloomington and then another friend is traveling across the u.s and he's stopping to visit him so i might drive down to bloomington and, and see them both oh nice you know what i mean yeah, like, cool. just, yeah yeah so but eventually yes the goal is to, to stop yeah of course. yeah yes I just want to, you know, it's like I'm just holding on for that final, like, of course. I just want to fucking finish the last little bit of the game that I missed originally. Lisa actually told <clears throat> me, I think we made a joke when we were over by your place. She, like I said, oh, if I played as much as you, like, she would dump me. Yeah. And she goes, yes, I would. Yeah. And then later that night, she actually told me, she goes, yeah, there was actually, like, a point with your league playing that I was getting there, and I'm like, oh. Fuck. And then she goes, but then you stopped. Like, yeah. I, she goes, I didn't even need to say anything. Yeah. I got sick of myself doing it. Yeah. That was the same thing with the alcohol, though. Like, you guys didn't, you guys are like, yeah, he's drinking a lot. But you didn't, like, tell me I was drinking a lot. Yeah. Like, I kind of. I mean, I, we did have many conversations about it, but. I just don't remember you were, it. You were also Wasted. drinking a lot. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, dude, Jackie's a saint, obviously. She puts up with it. Yeah. But, you know, there's a difference when you've been dating. I mean, I started playing WoW. We were already dating for, like, eight years, like seven or eight years. Yeah, it's time. true. It's you like would, yeah. she's just going to, you know, she's just going to put up with it because it is I mean, if you guys is. have a kid, though, it's it's all bets. Like, uh, I know. It's I all know. bets are off. Yeah. Thankfully, neither of us are kind of in that position yet. We just want to. Yeah, you guys got. We're trying to do everything smart. We were gonna buy the house first. You guys are gonna do the house and the wedding in the same year, and yeah, no, like, and yeah. I fucking I told her that that was Good. wishful thinking, especially now with pri- with housing prices at an all time high, and you know the cost of goods continuing to rise and everything else. So it's like you know we tried to do the house. We tried. I was like, we'll we'll go for one, and I really want to do the house because I figured the sooner we buy a house, the you know the sooner like we start we're, we're building equity. We actually own stuff. I'm not just fucking throwing money down the drain renting. Yeah, but then it's like, you know, it's it, like the mortgage is an, is at what the houses that we were looking at mortgage would have been like six or seven hundred dollars a month more than we're paying in right now, plus on in top rent of, in, in like it, if our mortgage would have been six or seven hundred dollars more than what we pay in rent. Oh my god! Yeah, usually and you're then, supposed to go for. I know, uh, I yeah, know, but rate. it's like you know, housing prices are at an all time high, and then we also started getting into it right when interest rates started going up. So yeah. it was like you know, so we were at, we had the the worst of both worlds. So we decided on the wedding and hoping that as housing prices start to fall, you know, maybe maybe next year we can do both because we already planned the wedding and we're already starting to pay for it. Yeah, and exactly. We're not touching our house money in the process. So we might be able to pull it off, but yeah, you just we'll gotta see. just gotta work yeah, harder. Yeah, I mean, that's like for one, I'm not buying a fucking house at its all time high, especially a house that's no. not worth what it's currently being no. sold for, because that's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, no. For two, I would like to eventually get out of Illinois, just because 
Fuck Illinois. Fuck Illinois. Fuck Illinois. Anybody from Illinois knows. Fuck, Fuck Illinois. Illinois. Exactly. So the only reason you ever find people living here. here, they go family. My family's family. here. Family. Yeah. Or yeah. like here. What do you think's keeping me here, dude? Chicago is a good city. Chicago, honestly, out of all the cities I've been to, I haven't been around the fucking world, but I've been yeah. to New York. I've been to L.A. I've been to you know some of these other major. I've been cities. to a lot of states. I do think that Chicago is still one of the best best yeah, cities it, that I've ever as been bad to. as the media portrays it. It's like yeah, everyone's dying here, and yeah. it's like you know, yeah. but our food. Fucking dude! Bomb, every time dude. I talk to anybody who's not from Chicago, they're like, I, "I'm like, oh, I'm I'm going downtown. So, well, be careful." It's like, no, dude, I'm not going to, to the, the south fucking side. areas where that shit is yeah, happening, exactly. dude. Like, it's like a very small pocket, like where but most that, of that. That's stuff like is the happening. same thing with Detroit. When I went and visited Brandon, you know, yeah. people have like this misconception about Detroit. Yeah, you Detroit's know? just a giant shithole, and everybody is getting shot everywhere. Yeah, but it's you know not. I mean? Like, like we're, yeah, exactly, it's not what's happening. Exactly. You know, like there's still good food. You're going places, live yeah. music, fucking mom spaghetti. Dude, you just got yeah, mom spaghetti. Yeah. You just got to find the right places yeah. to go, you know? Exactly. So, yeah, the misconception about, like, Chicago being like that is stupid. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I do like, you know, I like the city, right? I'm not buying any property in no. Illinois. No. no. But we've talked about this I mean, before. I've considered, like, maybe, like, renting in the city. Like, just yeah. for, like, a year. Just for just the experience. Just to get the experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same, it's like. Mm, mm, I don't know. I'll be all right. Yeah, I'll be okay without it. You know, yeah. especially like everything else is just so much more expensive down there, and it just continues to get worse. I mean, like we uh, we filled up Jackie's car on the way here. It was like five fifty a gallon, and that was at Costco yeah. and DuPage. Yep. It's like, dude, fuck, fucking go downtown. It's like almost seven dollars. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's fucking fuck crazy. Like out of here. Yeah, that's crazy. I was like. I drove Lisa back home today, and I'm like, shit, now I got to go to Eric's. I'm, like, driving all over the place today, yeah. you know. Um, speaking of that, did you want to head there? You can head there whenever you want. All right, cool. Yeah. Because I'm going to go to the bathroom, and then we're just going to go to Eric's. Okay, so then we're going we're gonna to call this up. Yeah, we're going to close this out here, folks. Yeah. So <laughs> you guys have a good rest of your night or morning. Peace. Thanks for joining in. Yeah.